Hi everyone, welcome to The Coding Zoo. If this is your first time joining, my name is Shane and this is the JavaScript Building Block series. Our goal to Coding Zoo is to help others like yourself learn how to program to become a programmer. In today's lesson, we're gonna cover how to use setters and getters on a JavaScript object. We're gonna create that object with a factory function. We're gonna show you how those setters and getters in combination with closer provide encapsulation so that you can hide your data, hide your business rules in an object-oriented fashion. And if that interests you, hey, stick around. We're going to jump right in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. In previous lessons, we covered how to create objects with factory functions. We, we, we covered how to create objects with uh, constructor functions. If you want to check the previous lessons, I'll put a link below or I'll put a link at the end of this video. Be sure to go check that out if you haven't. As a matter of fact, I would recommend you go watch those videos. If you're not familiar, watch them before you watch this one and then you know come back to this one, check it out. So I've got on my screen here a main.js file. Uh, it's included by my index file here. I went ahead and created a factory function. So this function here, create person, creates a object and returns it. It creates a person object and returns it. So this is very different than using like an object literal, which is more like a singleton and you create an object once and you just can use that object once for to represent like one person. With this factory function, I can create many JavaScript objects and represent many people all at once at the same time. So this is a factory function. Uh, we pass in the first name, last name, age, ID, and I use closure here. I create these variables using the let keyword, and these variables are not accessible outside of this closure, outside of this function. So I assign these values that are passed into the function to these variables that are, are not accessible. They're encapsulated. They're not accessible outside of this closure. This function returns an object literal. It's going to create a new object literal each time. And that's how you're able, that's why you have a factory. It creates a new person, a new object literal represent a different person each time. I could represent these properties uh, that are in this closure this way. First name, first name, and then person age, and then I could do age, and then age. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to have setters and getters. Um, Let's try that. So I'm going to put a setter and a getter for age, for first name and last name. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste a little bit of code to save some time. Uh, first, I'll go ahead and type in the first property, and then I'll uh, cut and paste a little code uh, to save a little time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add age. So this is going to be a get. So I'm going to do get age. And this, this is a get is a keyword. So another term for or get or getter is accessor, accessor. Now you have setters or set. Setters are called mutators. You're mutating the data, uh, get, you're getting, you're accessing the data. Accessors and mutators, getters and setters. Kind of the same thing, pretty simple stuff. Um, okay, so I've got get age and I'm going to um, return person age. And there we go. So I've got this person age uh, behind a get. Now, what's the benefit of something like this? Let's go ahead and I'm going to add another one. Uh, set age. I'm going to do person age equals age. Now I'm going to cut and paste to save a little time. I'm going to go ahead and add a setter and getter for each one of these and, and I'm going to show you what's the benefit. All right, so I have a get age, a set age. I have a get first name, a get last name. So here are the properties that are encapsulated inside this closure. Here's the object I return. It has getters and setters or accessors and mutators. Here's the get, the accessor for age. Here's the set, the mutator for age. Um, let me go ahead and add um, a variable there. Can't, gotta have a parameter to pass in there. 
Um, I've got get first name, get last name, ID, and I have set first name. Now notice how this setter, this mutator, is a little different. What is it doing? Well, it's applying business rules, right? So I want to put rules around setting that property. I don't want the user to know about these rules. I don't want the user to have to check these rules. I want to encapsulate that. I want to hide that inside of this object. I want that logic to exist only in this object and not outside of it. It's in a central place. It's logic around a person's name. It's business logic. So that logic in the object oriented world makes sense to go inside uh, the, the context of how it's being used. It's logic for a person's name, which a person's name belongs to a person. So this is encapsulation. Uh, and this is, this is also cohesion. You've got like functionality and like proper data and business rules together. All right. So I've got this, if is valid name, go ahead and set it. And if it's not a valid name, it throws an error to the user. Let me fix that real quick. Okay. All right. Same thing for the last name. So I don't want them to be able to blank the first name and last name out. Um, a, a empty name for a person is invalid use case. Uh, all people have to have a name. Uh, at least in my system here. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I've got these getters and setters around my properties. I have business logic in the setter and getter. I'm making sure before I set some, or in the setter, I'm making sure before I set something that it's valid. Uh, and if it's not valid, I warn the user, hey, you can't do that. So this is a pretty clean API for someone who might want to use my person object inside the code. The rules around how you use that person object are inside of the object. Okay, let's go ahead and access it. So first I'm going to go ahead and create um, a Shane person. I wanna pass in the first name Shane Last name, can't type, Crouch. And I'm going to put an age of, let's say, 25. I'm 25 years old. You believe that, right? And I'm going to put in an ID of 1234. So I just created a Shane object. Now, this is a factory function. I just created a Shane object. The factory returned it. I can also go ahead and turn around and create another one, like, let's see, maybe Nicholas. And he, let's put, he's, uh, we're going to say 10. I think he's nine. Maybe he's 10. I forget. Let's give him another key. Don't tell my wife. All right. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So now I have two objects. I use the same factory function to create those two objects. So that's the benefit of a factory function. Uh, I didn't have to use the, new, the keyword new, so I couldn't forget to use the keyword new. So that's a great benefit too. Um, all right, so how does that setter and getter work? Let's go ahead, I'm gonna write out Shane. Save a little time, I'm gonna cut and paste. Some code I prepared already. Okay, so I've got a document.write. I'm writing out a line. I'm putting and writing out my first name, last name, age, and ID. Now you'll notice there is there's a get first name, right? And you'll notice the first name up here is called person first name. This is enclosed. I can't access it except through this first name here. So with this code, you'll notice I'm not doing Shane get first name like other languages or get, or Shane get last name. I'm just doing Shane dot um, first name. JavaScript is smart enough to know, hey, that's the getter. All right, so hey, before I run it, let's go ahead and I noticed I got a bug right here. I've got my comma. Let's go ahead and put another comma there. Okay, let's go ahead and run it. I'm going to control S to save. I think I got my commas elsewhere. Let's get rid of that one. Save it. Go over here. Let's click refresh. There we go. So I was able to access the properties of that class using the getters. Let's go ahead and see what happens 
when I decide to set something. So I'm going to do Shane dot. It's not set first name. I'm just going to do Shane first name. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to go ahead and print it out again. I'm going to cut and paste some code here. Same code. Let's go ahead and print it out. So I printed it out. I was able to use Shane.FirstName. You can see the object. I was able to change the name using the setter. Now, what happened when I called that Shane.FirstName? Well, it actually called this setter and it ran this logic. Now, to the user of this API, it looks like I'm just setting a regular property. It doesn't even look like I'm calling any type of function or any type of logic. It looks, just looks like I'm setting a property. So that's kind of hidden to the user of this API, this objects API. That's encapsulation. All right, let's change it up a little bit. What will happen if I type in Shane dot first name equals and do that. Let's cut and paste it right again. Control S to save. Click refresh and nothing happened. Well, something did happen. Let's see what happened. I'm going to inspect it. All right, so there you go. Uncaught. Please provide a valid string for your first name. Someone using this object, uh, using this API, would then know, hey, there's some business rules here. I can't blank out a first name. A person has to have a first name. Go back to the code. Let's change it a little bit more. I'm going to change that to Tony just so it will display. Won't have any more error messages. Let's go ahead and I'm going to put Shane.id equals 223. So I have Shane.id equals 223. Do I have a setter and getter for the ID? Whoa, look at there. I don't have a, a, a setter for the ID. I only have a getter. So the ID, that's evidently like the primary key, like a social security number, you got one, you can't change it. Well, I guess you can change the social security number. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can't. I don't think you can. No, surely you can't. I don't know, who knows? Side to point, it's an ID, it's a primary key. So can't change it. What happens if I try to change it? Well, save it and Refresh, let's inspect it, console, and nothing happened. But did it change it? I don't think it did. I think it added a new property there. It didn't truly set this identifier. Let's check that out and see. So I'm gonna write it out again. And save it, click refresh, there we go. So you'll see it's one, two, three, four. I did add a new property to that object literal, but it didn't truly keep it around. So when you call the getter, it's not gonna get that property. It's gonna get the, the property, the data that's uh, in the closure. So I was able to make it to where uh, the user couldn't change the ID. So. Again, that's encapsulation. You're applying business rules. The user of the API of that object can't bypass those business rules. That is the beauty of closure. That's the beauty of setters and getters. Very neat stuff. As you get more and more into like object-oriented programming, you're gonna realize that that's the beauty of object-oriented programming and encapsulation and the cohesion, putting like data and like business logic together, hiding those business rules so other people don't accidentally change it or don't have to worry about it. Um, it's all in one place. Pretty cool stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed presenting setters and getters. I'm pretty passionate about object-oriented programming, especially coming from a Java world. So I, I, I look forward to discussing more of that with you. If you enjoyed this video, hey, be sure to go ahead and click like. Uh, if you didn't, click dislike, no problem. Let us know what you didn't like. We'd like to improve to make these videos better for you so you can learn. Our goal is to help others learn how to program. So any input is much appreciated. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and hope you join us next time. We'll see you later. Have a great week. <music>